Today we're cutting circles, squares, triangles, and rectangles in primary colors, and maybe even black. I have those colors together right here. These are quarter sheets of paper. Now I have them over the top of each other. So I'm going to choose one red, one blue, and one yellow. These are shapes that I have in a shape sorter set that you can trace or whatever, but I'm freehand cutting these, and I hope you'll try that also. I'm putting my shapes to the side. This was just an idea to think about, but I know that I need circles, squares, triangles, and rectangles. Okay, so let's look at these shapes. This is the only round shape we have, the circle. So maybe let's try to cut a circle. That might be the most difficult because most of these you can use the edge of the paper. If you have it lined up, cut line here, line here, you've got triangles. Line here, line here, you've got squares. Line here, line here, you've got rectangles. So rectangles are a longer shape than a square skinnier than the square usually and then also not as wide as a square and it's not equal on all sides two sides are equal here two sides are equal here so if i put these together and i've got these straight what you want to do when you cut circles is turn your paper. Spin the paper, keep this hand still. I did not draw these circles, I'm just cutting them. And the way I got good at cutting them was practicing. So now I have three circles. I would like you to cut at least three of each shape and then arrange them on your paper. So now I know I need triangles. Remember, if you have your paper together and everything is lined up and you cut it together, you're going to have three of the same shape at the same time. One, two, three. So now I can decide where to put those. My next shape, I could do a square. Let me see. There is not much room on this paper left. Let me grab three more sheets. Actually, I'm going to grab four. I'm putting these together, and one way to do that is to smack them down on the table, let them settle, and then you've got it. So, if I cut a long, skinny shape and then a short line, what shape is that? I'll lay it right there. What is that shape? If you said rectangle, you are correct. So there's a rectangle and there's a rectangle. Now, something that I find fascinating about rectangles, fold this in half. See, it was a rectangle, a long strip like a rectangle. And then if I find where it's even, like right there, and I cut it in half, I have two squares. So I can put those on. So I have rectangles, there's three. I have two squares. I need one more square, remember? So, and I can overlap these shapes. I think what I can do is make an abstract composition. That's a, something I don't know what it is, but I like the way it looks. Or I could make a person or a robot or anything I want to. I just want to make sure that you can cut these shapes. That's all I'm looking for today. So can you practice cutting circles, squares, triangles, and rectangles? Show me three of each. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, I've got more than three. One, two, three. Yeah, I've got three. One, two, three. Yes, I've got three. One, two, three, four. Yes, I've got more than three. So all I need to do is write my name on this or, and glue it, that would be great too. Let's look at this composition. What did I make? Is it anything? 
Is it the view of a park from above? If I'm flying over in a helicopter, is this what your neighborhood looks like? Or could you make something different out of it? It doesn't have to mean anything, but I do wanna see that you can cut these shapes. Now, if you need to draw the shape, that's fine too. Let me move this out of the way and draw some of these shapes. Sometimes you might need to get something to trace if you're drawing something perfect. So I have this cup that I was drinking water out of and I traced around it and then there's a good circle. Or if I had a square, like this crayon box is a square, right? I can trace around this too and then bingo, I've got a big square. If I wanna cut this into four parts, I have four squares, right? If I found a rectangle, I could trace it. A domino would work. I don't know if you have dominoes. But that was just one thing that came to mind. A playing card would be a rectangle. Like when you play cards, a triangle. We don't have too many things that are triangles usually laying around the house, but it's just three lines. <clears throat> and if you didn't have paper, you could draw these shapes and color them in. If you are using construction paper, it's already colored in, so you don't need to do that. Now, I want to make sure that I've got one, two, three, one, two, three. Now I need more triangles. How many more do I need? I've got one, two, three. So I need two more. So here's one. Remember three lines, one, two, three. And then if this was my work to be complete, let's color it in. So take our crayons or markers or whatever we have, do our best to color in these shapes. I'm using red, yellow, blue, and maybe black. And I have to look at what I'm coloring over because it can make a line underneath what I'm working on. And then it's not the way I want it to look. So think about where you're drawing or coloring and be in the right place to do your work. I'm coloring in these shapes so that I have a composition. It's not just lines. It's not just a simple drawing. I'm actually making artwork out of this. This is a lot like the Mondrian piece we worked on couple months ago in kindergarten and first grade and so we're using these primary colors and shapes to make this look exciting to make something that looks fun to look at maybe it's a something that we've never seen before maybe it helps you figure out an idea for something you're building or drawing or something you're interested or you could make a robot this way pretty easily with these geometric shapes like squares and rectangles for sure. So I'm using these colors so that I have something interesting to look at and I want to use a yellow and I want to use red and I want to use blue. So taking the time to color in these parts because when I take the time, you know, it takes 15 to 20 minutes to make a good piece of art usually. So take that time to do it. If you just hurry and turn it in, it's gonna look like you hurried. If you do take the time, it is going to look like you took the time. That's the only way to do it, boys and girls. You have to take the time, just like I am to show you. My video is not five minutes long. You're seeing how long it takes me to do something. It might take you longer to do something because you haven't practiced this probably as much as I have. And that's okay, this is how we learn things. So please try with me. Please try to do your work. Please try to turn it in. Don't just give me a blank. I wanna see what you can do. Because when we all get back together, we've got a lot of work to do. A lot of fun stuff. And I want you to know how to do that fun stuff. So you won't be bummed out that you don't know how to do things. Practicing cutting shapes is going to make you draw better. It's going to make your hand and eye coordination better. Now this piece is interesting. It's just as interesting as this piece. 
thing, this piece isn't glued down, so it keeps changing like an Etch-a-Sketch, but you know what I'm saying. Now it looks like a, a robot at a traffic light or something. It's, you know, you could give it a crazy name. This is up to you, boys and girls. I hope you have fun. Trace or draw three circles, three triangles, three rectangles, and three squares. So put those on a piece of paper, make your own composition, either cut or draw on paper, and this will be fun to look at. It's a geometric shape abstraction piece. Let's practice these shapes and color them in. Thank you, boys and girls.